Hey, I really appreciate it, but I've already got somebody I've been using for the last eight years. I'm good. Go. Is this important? Pretty important to me. I need to sell some shit today. Okay? Okay, come here. Come here real quick. Let's bust this up for 30 seconds. Collapse. I'll be moving too fast. Got my foot up on the gas. Full throttle till I crash. I'm back with the vengeance. You gonna see me end right, this. What do you do? Huh? Auto? Auto? Auto. Auto? I'm gonna try something else. You ready? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. All right. Come here. He says he does auto. How long have you been selling for? Um, 12 years. Okay. We got a veteran. I've been waiting to get a veteran. All right. So, guys, can I ask you a question? If you selling face to face is easy, isn't it? Selling on the phone's a little more difficult, isn't it? Hey, people don't like what you say. Click. They just be rolling out. Now, I'm gonna ask him some questions. Okay. If right now we didn't have a customer on the showroom floor, are you a sales guy or manager? Manager. Oh, this is even better. You know how God gave me such a gift. I got a manager of 12 years, okay? And by the way, listen to me. Hey, we're not going to judge him, but I'm going to give him the opportunity to show up, and he's going to grow, okay? He's either going to blow our minds or he's going to grow. One of the other things are going to happen. Right now, we don't have a client on the showroom floor. We need some deals. Am I right? Right. Okay, so we go ahead and we print out a list of all the people that bought a car in 2019 or 2020, right? Did these people make pretty good deals on cars? Yep, they weren't a part of that big giant pay 20 grand overprice range deal, right? So we know these people got a good deal, so we're gonna print out a list of these people and we're gonna call them. Is that cool? Cool. Okay, I'm going to be a customer that answers the phone. I wanna see if he can talk me into coming in and buying in a car, is that cool? Guys, it's called cold calling. Remember I told you the phones? If you, either you're selling something, looking for something to sell, or you're training to get better. All right, here we go. He calls me, and I bought a car there in 2019. Hello. Hey, is this Andy? Yes, Andy. Hey, Andy, how you doing? This is Grant over here at Volkswagen Tip. Hey, real quick, I'm going to get to the point. The reason why I'm reaching out is that uh, Volkswagen, as you know, because you drive the brand, we're still very grassroots company. So what they want is they want their current customer to drive their newest product. And what they do is, in order to do that, they want to take your car in for top value. So pay you the most in the market, give you the best deal, using some loyalty money to put you in a brand new car so that we can see that car out on the road. Rather than spend a ton of money on advertising and all this other stuff, stuff what we like to do is be sure you're in a new Volkswagen so you can be out there and continue to wrap your brand up with the brand stuff. Interested in that at all? Okay. So hold on. So you've been talking for about 45 seconds. I ain't said a word. Okay? To me, if I ain't said a word in 45 seconds, there's a good chance there's going to be a hang up in there or I'm just going to be a. Now, by the way, I'm not being negative, okay? Let's say I'm still on the line. Hey, I appreciate it. Um, I'm not interested. I like my car. What do you like about your car? You guys sold it to me. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, specifically, though, what do you love about your car? You've got to have something. Yeah, it was just, it was everything I wanted. It drives great. Everything's still good. Yeah. Not one thing you don't get in that's just like, man, I just love that radio, man. I just love the time. Dude, I'm happy. I'm just happy. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's awesome because what we did is we took what you're happy with and we made it better. You know, okay. So All right, hold on, hold on. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, right? What do we do in selling? Are we master communicators? Yeah. Guys, do you understand he's not selling me anything? His job is to help me. His job is to get me interested, number one. If you're going to cold call, call, call somebody, there has to be a point in which you say something that's interesting to them. I'm, he's just pitching me. I'm not negative. I'm just saying he's pitching me, okay? And by the way, whenever you call people, you have to get them to interact. Guys, can you withdraw money out of the bank account if you don't deposit money into it? No, you can't withdraw that money if you don't deposit money. Some of you guys are like this. I'm like, that's why you're broke. <laughs> you keep trying to pull money out. You're overdrafted. You ain't putting nothing in. Okay, listen, deposit, withdraw, deposit, withdraw, right? Are you ready? Answer the phone. You ready? Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hey, what's going on? This is Andy down here at ABC Motors where you bought your last car from. I was reviewing your account. I need about 30 seconds of your time. It's extremely important. Can I get 30 seconds? Yes. There's the first yes. Beautiful. Hey, number one, do you still have the 2019 Toyota Corolla you bought from us back in 2020? You still got it? Still do. Beautiful. The question number two that I was going to ask you, my general manager wanted me to personally reach out. If you still have the vehicle, he wanted me to ask you one question. If he was willing to offer you more money, more money than what your car was worth, would you mind if I told you how much that was? Can I tell you? 
Can I tell you? Is he saying yes? I mean, make it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, make it the client's idea every single time. Is he saying no or yes? How am I doing that? Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments. Tell me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Well, number one, I'm trained. I'm trained. Number two, I know how to sell and how to sell is to communicate. Communication is the disconnect between people spending more money and then people not spending money. The way we communicate stuff with them. Hey, my name's Andy Elliott down here at ABC Motors. Where you bought your, down at ABC Volvo, where you bought your last car from? Listen, I was reviewing your account. Need about 30 seconds of your time. It's extremely important. Can I get 30 seconds? Now, I want you to think about this. I said, I'm reviewing your account. What account? When he bought his last car, I got his name and number. Okay? Hey, by the way, I was reviewing your account. I need 30 seconds of your time. How long is this going to take? 30 seconds. Come on, dog. That takes 30 seconds. But I'm going to get you. And then, by the way, it's extremely important. Why would you say no if I said it's extremely important? Is this important? Pretty important to me. I need to sell some shit today. Okay? Right? Hey, what's going on? Andy down here at ABC Motors. I was reviewing your account. I need 30 seconds of your time. Extremely important. Can I get 30 seconds? And what did I end it with? I didn't say, you want to buy something? I said, are you interested in trading? No. I said, can I get 30 seconds? Well, they said, yeah, I'll give you 30 seconds. Beautiful. Number, question number one, do you still have the 2019 total Corolla you bought from us back in 2020? You still got it? He's going to say no. I'm going to say, cool, what do you got now? Okay, so we're going to say, yeah, I'm going to say beautiful. Well, listen, the second question I was going to ask you, my general manager, his name's Eddie. He's an amazing guy. You maybe met him when you were down here. He wanted me to reach out and ask you one question if you did still have it, which you do. If he was willing, and slow down, if he was willing to offer you more money, and I say it twice, more money than what your car was worth, would you mind if I told you how much that was? I said, can I tell you? Can I tell you? They say, yeah, tell me. I say, beautiful. Anyway, tell me. I'm getting them interested. And I say, cool, let me tell you how this works. Everybody say, let me tell you how this works. You're taking control. I say, beautiful, man. Let me tell you how this works. Basically, my general manager, he's already paid over $200,000 in the last week overpaying for people's cars like yours. He's getting so crazy. We're about to put him in a straight jacket. I just need you to come down for about two minutes. I'm going to blow your mind. And in the end, it's completely your decision, whatever you decide to do, okay? Can you make it down right now or after work be best? Go. Afterwards. Tell me you're not interested. I'm not interested. Okay, no problem. Let me ask you a question real quick. By the way, I want to tell you, thank you for being a valued customer. It means everything to us. Listen, quick question. If your home was worth hundred grand, hypothetically, and someone was going to give you $500,000 for it, would you give them two minutes of their time? Just two minutes? Would you? Good. That's all I need is two minutes. Can you make it down right now or would after work be best? I just want to reach out, shake your hand, look at your vehicle. Look, I don't know if you got a magic rabbit foot in your pocket, but I'm going to blow your mind, give you a crazy offer, and in the end, it's your decision. I'm not going to ask you to buy anything. I'm not going to ask you to do anything. I just want to blow your mind. I want you to come by the store for two minutes. You'll be in, out, mind blown. My name's Andy Elliott. When we hang up, I'm going to send a picture of me. I'm going to send you our address, which I know you already know where we are. And I just want to find a time to meet with you for two minutes. You think you can make it down today or tomorrow will be better? Guys, am I going to get an appointment more than likely? What are your salesmen doing all day long? Could you imagine if they could say this? You would have a showroom floor full of people that do this. Now, when I'm on sitting there and I'm like, okay, I'll be there tomorrow at 2. What do you think starts happening in my mind? I start thinking, what if I get down there and they offer me a lot of money? What will I buy? All of a sudden, you've taken someone who's not in the market to starting to think, when I come down, what am I going to do? That's it. You're literally bringing people in. Number one, with trade-ins, they don't owe too much money on. Your company's trying to acquire more cars because the more cars they get, the more money they make. This is a car that's sitting in front of us. We don't have to pay an auction fee. We don't have to pay a transport fee. It's going to come in. And more than likely, if the guy sells us this car, the question is, hey, if, if we did offer you more money than your car was worth and we blew your mind, what would you drive home in? <laughs> Something newer, bigger, smaller, lower miles, better gas mileage, more warranty? What would it be? 
He's like, more warranty. I'm like, bam! Holy shit, it must be your birthday. I just got something in. It's like, do you guys see it? You know what I know? Listen, this is everything I'm teaching you right now. Everything is called this. It's all this. By the way, listen to me. You know why I want to train your teams? Why I want to train you? Art of selling. It doesn't exist anymore. By the way, if you want to be a closer, this is a word that should actually be erased and called communicator. A master closer is a master communicator. A closer is not some hardcore closer that goes in and slams his hand down and shuts a deal down. It's somebody that goes into the room that sells like a lion, acts like a lamb. They don't even know a lion's in the room. And the lion is tearing them to shreds because the lion is prepared. The lion has trained. The lion lives for the journey and the hunt. The lion knows how this is going to end. It's going to end in our favor. And by the way, a deal has to be good for two sides to be a good deal. Never forget that, okay? I don't like people one way me. Okay, like a deal's got to be good for me too. Well, do you know what I think what most people are just asking for from salespeople? Just for us to wake up and be professionals. That's, I, I think that's all they want. You think people think stuff's going to cost a lot of money? Yeah. They just want to feel good spending their money. Am I right? Dude, if you guys want to be rich, number one, yes, people need to understand your business. Understand systems and processes. Yes, understand some inventory, like product knowledge stuff. But really, our people, a lot of them know product knowledge now, but nobody knows people knowledge. Nobody understands how to get people to move or feel moved. Nobody gets people to feel a certain way to make them want to do business with you. This is the missing key. Okay, and COVID killed this, which is the best thing that ever happened. Because when COVID came through, it was the great reset of all companies. That's how my company smoked everybody. When everybody else got hit, they started complaining. Then it got good. They got lazy. Dude, most salespeople in this industry have literally forgot how to sell. They forgot how to close. They became whiners. They became complainers. All they do is talk about what's wrong. It's like, dude, it's like COVID ripped the eyes out of the entrepreneur and gave them these like awful, like negative eyes. Dude, I can't believe how lucky we are. Everybody sucks right now and you got a chance to crush everybody. Dude, tell me what else you would do with your time other than sell or train or get in shape and take care of your family. What else would you do? Nothing. Everybody needs to decide today, today. And, 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 go, and go big. Like, don't go small. Like, like my wife did a two-year goal that we wanted to pay all this debt off, and we hit it. And it was the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life, most fulfilling thing I'd ever done in my life. My wife said, we are going to go through a season of saying no. We are going to say no to everything that doesn't align with two years from now. Everything. So if somebody's like, hey, man, we want to no. Yeah, and, and I know because that's weird. Because you guys are ass kissers. You're crowd pleasers. You don't call your own shots. You guys have the ability. To be an entrepreneur is to create. Create the life you want. You want to create the bank account you want? You got to create the life you want. So anyways, we're role playing together, right? right? If he was my manager and I asked him, I said, hey, man, boss, I got I to gotta sell more cars. Well, the phone, it would be on the phone because there's not always going to be a customer sitting on the showroom floor, son. You're going to have to use the phone. So I would call a couple people and then they would hang up on me. They wouldn't buy nothing. Nobody would come in. And eventually, I would stop calling on the phone. Right. I remember my manager told me when I was 18 years old, he goes, go work to service drive. Walk over to service. Your best customer's over there. Well, they didn't teach me how to do it. So I talked to four or five people. They were all assholes. Nobody bought nothing. So I hated it. So I literally walked back over to the used car lot. And I stood by the gate again. And they're like, who's going to work service today? I'm like, screw that place. But then I had a manager that showed me, notice, what did I say? Showed me. Okay, hey, hey, you wanna train your team? You wanna train yourself? You wanna close people? Who's the trainer? You are. If you can't show your people, they can't do it. Okay, he showed me, he goes, come on. He walked over and he goes, hey, how you guys doing? What do you got in service? Guy's like, oh, I got a 2018 Toyota to Crawl. He's over. He goes, awesome, my name's Andy Elliott, used car manager, just wanna say hi. Hey, by the way, can we get you guys something to drink while you're waiting today? Dude, I watched him as he, he played the ultimate selling game in the world, which is called reciprocity. 
I watched him. He goes, the guy goes, no. He goes, no, I got to get you something. If you're going to be in our service drive, we got to get you something, okay? Cold cup of water, something hot. I don't care. I'll get you an empty cup. I just got to get you something. And he shook his head like this. Like, you guys already know. He's like, got to get you something. And the guy goes, I'll take a cup of water. He said, good. Guys, give me one second. He walks. He goes and gets a cup of water, brings it back, and I'm sitting there. And as he hands it to him, you know what I know? Now the guy owes him something. He sat down with him. He starts talking. He says, what do you got in service again? You got that Honda Civic? Beautiful. Awesome, man. Where'd you buy it from? Did you buy it here? Buy it somewhere else? He starts telling him how he bought it somewhere. So he goes, beautiful. Why do you serve it with, with us? Guy's like, you guys live closer. And he says, that's crazy, man. I wish we'd have had one when you were in the market. He starts talking to him and he goes, hey, let me ask you a question. I'm going to walk out to service real quick. If I was willing to offer you, he said the same thing. He goes, if I was willing to offer you more money than what your car was worth, like more money, like this is what it's worth and I'm going to give you more. Would you mind if I told you how much that was? Could I tell you? He didn't say, would you trade it in? Would you sell it to me? He said, would you mind if I told you how much that was? Can I tell you? And the guy goes, yeah, you can tell me. He walked out to service. He walked back in and he goes, if I offered you more money than what it was worth, let me ask you a question. Because I think I can. And he didn't even ask him what he owed or what it was worth or anything. He didn't even say a number. He goes, what would you replace it with? Very simple, common sense question. Something newer, bigger, smaller, lower miles, better gas mileage, more warranty, what would it be? And he hit him with a smile and shut up. And the guy goes, probably something bigger. And he goes, something bigger, like taller, bigger, or like more than a whole more people. Guy goes, something with the third row. He goes, you know what? You must have a magic rabbit foot in your pocket because it's your lucky day. Come here, I got something for you. He didn't even give him a number. They didn't even talk about it. This is how sales works. They walked over. He goes, Andy, get that expedition. Pulled it up. He shoved the guy in it. The guy goes for a drive. Come back. He goes, Andy, go get the trade. We're working a deal. This, and that guy bought a car. And I realized that, man, no manager ever walked me over to service and showed me how to convert a client. And that's why I could never do it. And I hated it. You know what I really hated? Some of you in here, you have a fear of the phone. You hate the phone because you're not successful at it. And by the way, if I went to the gym every day and I didn't get results, I'd probably quit phone going to. Am I right? Think about it. If you walked in the service drive and you worked it every day, you'd probably not go over to service no more. Dude, what I've learned is that we don't give people the skill that they need to even learn. And competence creates confidence. So if people don't get competence, we wonder why our sales team never has enough confidence or why they never hit their numbers. It's because they don't know how to get there. So I just want to tell you, like, as you guys are thinking, like, how am I going to get to my next level? Like, this is how. By the way, these rooms, these rooms are made to mind shift you. Does that make sense? Guys, training isn't something you did. Like, oh, went to training. That's off the list. It's like, no, like now, total immersion. If you ever wanna really grow a big, beautiful life, become financially successful beyond imaginable, become obsessed with learning. Okay, all right, let's keep rolling. Let's roll for a minute. All right, hold on. Why are you pointing to him? What's he sell? He's a, he owns a mechanic shop. He's, he's, a, he's a diesel mechanic, and he's wanting to grow his company, get into accounts, but he's having a, trouble with a few objectives. Okay, come here. Come here real quick. Let's bust his ass up for 30 seconds. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna go back down this road, but listen, I just wanna say something. What's your name, Mike? Michael. Mike, this is easy, okay? Tell me this, you're going to sell something, you're upselling people on work that needs to be done, or are you selling them on something? I'm selling a service. Okay, tell me the service. Uh, I have an on-site fleet service. We have service. Uh, no, no, but tell me, tell me what are you going to try to sell me? Ready? Ten seconds. What do I? What can I buy from you? All right. So. <laughs> no, no, no. What, what, what can I buy? On-site fleet service. Like, can I buy a service? Like, you're going to service my car, or like, I'm, so have, I'm written a diesel from you. Like, what is it? Uh, so you have 38 wheelers. Hey, Andy. Uh, Pass by, I saw you have eight 30 18 wheelers, 30 trailers. Uh, we, have, we offer a... Okay, so you're, you see I have a fleet of trucks and you want to service them? Yes. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay, hey, you come to me, which by the way, you come to me, you cold, you cold pitch people. Am I right? Like if you find out they have a fleet, do you go over there and talk to them? Yes. Okay, so you cold pitch people because you don't know these people. They don't request information about your service. You go talk to them first. Yes. 
Okay, you guys get it? He cold pitches people. So he, he finds out I got 18, 18 wheelers, whatever, sitting over here, or I've got a fleet of whatever, right? He walks over, he's like, hey man, what's going on? I just wanna tell you, I obviously got a big fleet. I don't know who your does your service, but I don't like to take over that account. Am I correct? Correct. Okay, hey, I really appreciate it, but I've already got somebody I've been using for the last eight years. I'm good, go. Come on. That's that objective. Uh, no, 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 what are you gonna say though? Like you just gonna say, oh, I'm out. <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Hey, listen, my name is Michael. I know we haven't met yet, but what I've learned and research shows that a lot of these service truck companies, that is a big service truck companies that does your stuff, do they have a lot of accounts? Yes. Yeah. What I've learned is as they become bigger accounts, they forget about their customers. Okay. My name's Michael. I'm only looking to take on about 10 or 15 fleet accounts. That's it. You know why? Because service of my customers at the highest level is extremely important to me. Look, I'm going to ask you a question. You sound really loyal to the company you're currently with. I'm wondering if that loyalty is coming back to you as loyal as you are to them. Can I ask you a question? Have you noticed any discounts come across your, your table in the last year where they've allowed you to save money by being a loyal customer? Probably not. You know what I've learned by buying insurance? My insurance company, I had the same insurance company for 10 years. You know who they were giving the best deals to? New customers. And I overpaid as a loyal customer. This is what we commonly see, which is why I never want to be one of the big guys. What I want to do is that I want to find 10, 15 clients that I can give everything to and that I want to be loyal to. And I want to make sure that when you spend your money, the job gets done right, but also you save as much as you can because I understand this isn't a nonprofit. Would you agree? Yes. Can I ask you a question? Would you mind if you showed me what you currently are doing now with what you have? And if I could offer something better with even more loyalty, would you allow me to at least give you a five minute proposal? Could I show it to you? Absolutely. Okay. Here's my point. What did I do? I say, have you noticed a lot of these guys get really big and you're really loyal to them? But the question is, how loyal are they to you? See, I promise you, there is a way to frame every conversation to get people to turn around their decision. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, now listen, I, I, I'm just going to say something, right? You, you seem a little bit scared. And I know you're starting a new business, but I need you to understand something. You're going to have to not be afraid of nothing. You're gonna to have to walk in like that's your freaking fleet. Can I explain this to everybody? If I want to take an account down, I'm gonna walk in like that's my place. If you're a salesman and you work in a company and you don't walk in like that's your company, you're gonna get your ass kicked. Those are my cars, that's my lot, that's my finance department, that's my dealership, this is my business. I'm not an employee, this is my business. My business, so I take care of my shit. I walk over, my office is always clean because that's my business. I need you to understand something. When you walk in, you need to walk in like you own it. Don't walk in like you're trying to crowd please. Walk in like you own it. And then you walk out like you sold it. Like Bradley always says, you walk out like you sold it. Like I just sold that shit. that's done. That's easy. You walk in like you own it though. People can see in your eyes when you're scared. People can see in your eyes that you're praying, don't hit me with something. Okay, or I'm hoping. Don't hope people are gonna do nothing. See this, see this mind? I wanna give you an example. Okay, do you want people to have the courage to give you an option to see a proposal, yes or no? Do you want people to do something they've never done, an exception just one time, to do something different with you, yes or no? Yeah. Okay, well you're gonna to have to let them borrow that courage. Okay, when I'm sitting at a kitchen table with a family or I'm sitting down in a dealership with a client, they can get the courage from me to pass go and move forward. I'm going to give them the courage. Who else are they going to get it from? Are they going to call a buddy? People are scared all the time. Who do they need? They need somebody to give it to them. Who are they going to get it from? From you. It comes from you, man. I'm going to say this one last time. Security. Where does it belong? Inside of you. Most people in this world, they find security in jobs, in money, in cars, in houses. That's the reason why they're overliving. All their shit is debted out. Once they have to downgrade, it kills them. I'm going to explain something to you. 
When I sit at the kitchen table with my family, my three kids and my wife, which needs to be what you do, your family needs to look into your eyes and say, we're good. My husband, he's good. We can lose it all today. We'll have it tomorrow. Come on. I see it. That's the man I have sitting in the kitchen table with me and my, that's what I want to see with you. When I'm sitting with the client and they look across, who else are they going to buy from? Come on, man. Who else are you going to do business with? Come on, who, who, who is going to give them that belief? You are. People need something to believe in in a world where nobody believes in shit anymore. That's you. Somebody needs to freaking have the confidence. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.